Hi, everyone. Good morning. How's everybody doing? We're excited. We're going to have a lot of talk about educator perspectives. And I'm really focused on the educator side of things, so I'm really glad to be able to do this. Um, but the name of my little micro talk is Where Teachers Are and What They Need. Um, if you're on LinkedIn, you probably think that everyone is an expert prompt engineer, that we all have GPT-4, and we know exactly what's happening. And I'm here to, unfortunately, uh, blow that up and say that we are still at the incredibly early stages of what this means. So I'm very lucky at AI for Education, I have probably trained about 35,000 teachers directly on generative AI, just 3,000 in the last week. And what I see is that every room, there's an amazing disparity between never use it, use it all the time. And so for example, this was at an ed week, 500 educators in December, and only 2% had used it a lot. Fully two-thirds of those educators had never used a generative AI tool of any kind. So this room, you guys are early adopters, most likely. You're going to be on the front edge of this work, but schools are far behind. And so it's really important for us to understand that. We talk about what educators need. It is a lot more than we think. So here's what I see in every single room I'm in. There is a lot of fear and uncertainty. Nearly half of teachers said they were uncomfortable with generative AI. And I will say that that tends to be even higher in, let's say, an elementary school. Or if you're an English language arts teacher in this room or have been, you're pretty upset. And so there's a lot of people that are really afraid of what happens. And what is this going to mean for student learning, as well as the idea of AI is only for cheating? And I know we're going to talk about that later today in this our talk, but I think we have to understand just where our educators are. This is the fastest consumer-facing technology of all time. And it means that we all, while we might all not, not use AI, we all have an opinion about AI. And a lot of those opinions in education are pretty negative. But at the other end, I've been in education for 20 years. I have never seen people so open to learning. I cannot tell you. I've never had a hard room, ever. We start with talking about uncertainty. We talk about dismystifying what the technology is and isn't. And then we show what it can mean for them. And so when we talk about what we think we should do, what educators need, is we do not need a whole bunch of AI expert teachers. Teachers should be t experts at teaching. And they should be augmented by technology to help them teach better. We should not expect them to be able to keep up with something that I promise you not everyone in this room is. And we have time for it. And so it's really important for us to focus on two things. And that's building capacity about what these tools are or aren't and how they can help but also finding value. How can this make school better for once? School has not gotten better for a really long time, and this is an opportunity to do that almost immediately. So what we focus on are five key areas. And the first is comprehensive AI literacy training. And I say this in the sense of not just for educators, but for leaders, for community members, and definitely for students. This is incredibly important. And when I say AI literacy, I am talking about AI, but really specifically generative AI. We need to be discussing what these tools are or not. If I ask this room, is AI thinking, what would you say? There are rooms of teachers that say 50% will say yes. 50%. And sometimes it's only 2 to 10 people, but sometimes it's a full half room. So there's a lot of misconceptions about what artificial intelligence is. And that happens because OpenAI put something into the world that was conversational, that you say hello to. You might, are you a person that says please and thank you? I am sometimes. This is an opportunity where the UX and the way it was put into the world really makes people think about these tools differently. It also makes us fall asleep at the wheel where we tend to look at it and believe it's true. And what do we know about these tools? They mess up a lot. And while I hate the term hallucination, it is something where those inaccuracies really are hard to find, but they're ever present. So that's really important for us to understand. So teaching about AI literacy is really, really important. What are these tools? What are they not? What are the capabilities? And what are the limitations? That's number one. Number two is we do not need to throw 1,000 tools at teachers. Here are 500 differentiation tools. And you're going to make like, worksheets better and faster. We do not need that, but what we need to see is job embedded applications. And so I love the presentation before, but what are the things that teachers spend the most time on? Planning, grading, and like talking to parents, okay, depending on where you are. 
And so the idea of actually building applications that work within the workflow of a teacher and actually augment and help them save time, build better materials, do more with what they have is really important. The third piece, and I know that um, Keith is going to talk about this, is strong guidance on responsible use. And so people are waiting for someone to say, this is what responsible use means. And you talk about that fear and uncertainty. If you could do that, it brings down that level almost immediately. So are we saying, are there opportunities for students to use these tools in a responsible way? Are we rethinking those opportunities? Are we just saying it's banned? Because I'm going to tell you right now, that is impossible. It was impossible when ChatGPT came out. It's even more impossible now that generative AI tools are in every part of our lives and will continue to be more a part of our lives and technology, not less. The, la the fourth piece is safe and reliable tools for students. And I'm going to add something to that. Also cost effective. These tools are incredibly expensive, which we know. And there are really a lot of opportunities for schools that are ready to do this work, or districts and teachers, that they don't have a place to go because they do not feel like these tools are safe yet. And I have to say, I don't think they are either. And then the last piece is, let's give space for innovation. We don't want to reinforce bad practice or existing practice. We have had a model for over 100 years that we haven't changed a lot, and we know that doesn't work. So this is a place, and actually creating a place for innovation, experimentation. So we are not just building better worksheets, but we're also think we're starting to think about what education can become. So thank you guys so much.